moral of the story is this, that when you are sick or when you are injured, you need to do things differently. There's something different that needs to take place. You can't carry on the same way. Okay? Second one, or third one rather, this is a guy, the, yeah, the, the moral and point of this one is that the guy obviously looks lost. I would assume that because he's busy rubbing his neck. I don't think he's got a neck ache, but he's thinking, Khrit, where am I? Kind of over there. But also when you lost, something different needs to take place. Something different needs to ultimately happen. Same applies with our phones. I mean, when this phone starts going red, a lot of people's lives, it's not a bad thing, but a lot of people's lives because of business or ministry or whatever the case is, a lot of their life is, you know, the phone plays a valuable part in that. So when it goes like this, I mean, you got to do something different. You got to plug it into power so that it can do what it's supposed to do. And then also lastly, this is a, a debt that you do not want <laughs> over here. It's a pretty big number over there and it is in the negative so when something looks like this, like something different needs to happen. Something different needs to take place. And I want to share just some, that's all I have for you guys today is just good news. That's literally what I, have, what I have for you guys today. And good news is always nice to be received. Like no one likes to hear bad news. Good news is a great thing because good news ultimately does what? It brings hope back. So it feels like you can go again, you can move again, you can move forward with your life. So I want to share just a couple of ideas that will not be on the screen, but they are here in this lovely booklet. And, and here we go. Here's some good news. Point number one is this. We as individuals, we, main, we just celebrated Easter. Right, And I think one of the key points of Easter is that it helps us to ultimately realign again with the right priority, which is the finished work of the cross. And yeah, with that being said, before I go into this, you must understand something very clearly and very specifically, and that is this. There is no other work required in order to earn God's acceptance, love, or favor. The price has been paid in full. Like the price has literally been covered. It's like, for example, let's say this was, I don't use myself as, as an example. Let's say there's a guy here called, I uh, almost said Walter, Walter, <laughs> Walter or Wally. Let's say his name is Wally. So here's Wally over here. Wally's got this particular debt. This is going to bless you guys because this, this transformed part of my life. So Wally's got this massive, massive debt. But let's say, for example, that morning, Monet feels very charitable and he's compelled by the love of God to pay Wally's debt in full, to pay it. Well done, champ. You know, kudos for you. But you decide, listen, God moved in your heart and God said, listen, I want you to pay Wally's debt because why? I love Wally. But Lord, don't you know that Wally messed up? Don't you know that Wally is an absolute fool for going to so much debt? He should have known better. But, you, but God tells you, no, I love Wally. So I want you to please purchase Wally's debt. Pay off Wally's debt. So now you come and you pay off Wally's debt and Wally's like, blah, bro. Listen, I'm taking you to Nando's. Thank you so, so much. And then Wally had an initial agreement to actually pay back that debt. All right, let's say 3,000 uh, 3, rand per month. So now you paid the debt in full. You paid it once and for all. You paid the debt. And then Wally still goes to the bank and puts his 3,000 rand down every single month. Does that make sense? So, for example, a lot of us, we live our lives like that. Jesus paid the price in full, but we still try and earn God's favor, his love, his acceptance, his forgiveness. Jesus has paid the price in full. There's no other price. There's no other sacrifice that must be paid. And many people, unfortunately, have believed the lie that the enemy has sown into their lives that for some reason God is angry at you and that's why things are not going the way you want it to go. No, God has poured out his judgment upon sin once and for all on Jesus. When he was on the cross, he said these words, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Because in that moment, all of God's wrath, all of his judgment for sin came upon Jesus Christ. And he took the price. It was like in, in soccer, you call it the super sub. There was a guy, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who used to play for Man United. And then he started to coach Man U, And then Man U almost fell apart. But anyway, he, he, he was called like the super sub. I mean, you would bring Ole on last couple of minutes and he'd win the game for you. It was the super sub that came on. That's basically what Jesus did. Like our punishment, all right, our condemnation. Our uh, downfalls, our poverty, our sickness, our disease, everything came upon Jesus at that moment when he was on the cross. And he said what? It is finished. And I think this is one of, and this is a point I want you guys to think about. One of the greatest, biggest challenges in, in the human race 
is not our discipline. It is not our focus. It is not our procrastination. It is not our consistency. It has got nothing to do with that. Our biggest challenge, one of the biggest, um, if not the biggest challenge that we have, is simply believing that God is good. That is our biggest challenge because there's something in, our, in the fallen nature of man that thinks, oh, God saved me from this, but I, it's been a good run. I guess I've probably got to do it by myself from here on out. And we do this in so many areas of our lives, spiritually, in marriage, in our relationships, financially, when people go into financial debt. Like we think like, oh, how many times, we, we, we might not articulate it, but it is the attitude of our heart where we're like, oh, I got myself into this, I probably got to get myself out of this right now. And Jesus is like, what? Just come to me. Come to me, believe in my goodness, how high, how wide, how deep, how long, how expansive, how inclusive, how accepting is the love of God over your life. And I will carry that burden for you. Yes, you deserve the consequence of what you did. But Jesus says, listen, bring that to me. I am enough. I, Christ Jesus, I am enough. I paid the price in full, which leads to these points over here now. Number one. We must very, very, like these are going to set, I believe, some of us free inside here. It's okay with the screen. We'll have it here. We maintain God's forgiveness, not through our doing, but through the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses us. For some reason, we think once I confess, then God forgives me. No, way before your confession, God has already forgiven you. Hence, you confess. Does that make sense? God's not like, I'm waiting until you confess and then I will forgive you and then things will go right. No, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. So should you decide to never follow Jesus Christ for the rest of your life, remember God still loves you and his gift is still there. But if you reject it, there's a consequence for that. But receiving it, you receive absolutely everything. 